Screw that. <laughs> What's going on everybody? Wayne's Workshop here and it's full of smoke in here and it's finally time for the big super smoke machine 3000 XL big plume smoke all of that whatever you want to call it it's time for a huge smoke machine not that one this one so let's do this so as you can see I already built this everything in this thing uh, I'll have links in the description below uh, on the RX 300 box mod the uh, small air pumps and the uh, mellow E300 uh, atomizer and you need four high cap lipo batteries so you need four of those I have links of those in the description these are not the same as the lipos in a power bank do not confuse them these are high capacity lipos also for uh, quick charge and quick discharge so they cost a little bit more but as you just saw it's worth it so let's get building this thing so the RX 300 right now the batteries are in but if I press it it says no atomizer found and that is this little guy right here uh, we're gonna make the necessary mods first so let's pop out those four batteries first and let's open her up three screws one there one there and one there three screws are out then also these two screws all right <clears throat> now with these two screws removed you can remove the front end two buttons will fall out those are those buttons put that aside and then when the front panel is removed you need to take out this screw and that screw and then when you pop it back open we can start wiggling the internal frame out now this is the battery casings the batteries slide in here these are just bendable plastic so you can just bend it a little bit and it will be out for ease of putting it back in I tend to remove these these are just battery guides so that they don't end up in each other's channel but add these back in later and we can also remove the pin that holds the battery door in just by pushing it and pulling it out and off comes the battery door it will do that anyway so might as well remove it for now because we need to solder two wires one on the positive one the red one and one on the negative wire the black one and this will be to uh, <coughs> and this will be to lead to a switch which then will activate one of the air pumps because the air pumps will we are going to drive directly off of the four um, lipo batteries also we need to take out this control box because we need to access the button that's underneath here this this button that you can push is not the actual button this button pushes a different button on the board and we need to add uh two contact points to it so we can add a switch to it because we're not going to be able to use this button while we are all cosplayed up let's say you're wearing a full armor and this is in your back uh well it's kind of hard to reach so we need to extend this button with some wire and an external switch so we need to take this out but it's kind of hard to wiggle out I'll try it right now because you're pulling <clears throat> let me see if I can spot it you can see the pluses and the minuses there that's the other side of the battery holder and that is connected with a plastic casing to this circuit board so what I'm gonna do is grab these pair of pliers and try to grip on that center 
black raised edge and try to pull it out from there. So I got it right there. There we go. Now we can access access this button. This button is actually what is getting pushed by this button, which now has fallen out. <laughs> no worries, that needs to come out anyway. So let's see if we can, there we go. Don't need that. So we need to add uh, a wire to one side and a wire to the other side and we'll be ac across from each other. What I will also do is because this needs to be pushed back in and it will have wire sticking out and that will get blocked here. So <clears throat> I am going to cut a slot away and nobody was hurt. Now it has a nice V slot thing and the wires can just go on through and will stick out there. That's why we threw the button away also. I am again using one of these quick uh, connect, disconnect, uh, quick snap on thingies. Uh, I'll put a link of these in the description. I always use these, especially now because these uh, have two small pins to them that are already pre-soldered and they're perfect for these little uh, soldering uh, connection points and once this set I'll super glue it I'll zip tie it shut so that the tension if you're like wearing it and the cable would be pulling it would be pulling the zip tie and not your connection point because this will be the most fragile part of it and let's say one of my switches is broken I can just quickly disconnect it and then on the other side that's connected to here I could just replace the switch and then in in future um, repairs or something I wouldn't have to mess around with these soldering points so that's why I'm using these quick connects so soldering I can't get a more zoomed in picture because my camera does not allow it and then, then I'll lose focus but what I'll do is I have this sharp pointed well it's kind of blurry now uh, there you go uh, the soldering <laughs> oops soldering iron with the pointy end and I got my uh, little bit of solder ready and I'm gonna heat up because it's also densely packed I'm just gonna touch that connection point there we go well that's one end now I'm gonna do the same to the other end and that is for me the uh, I just did the bottom right one and now I'm gonna do the top left one still a fair bit of solder on my iron so I'm just gonna heat up that connection point and hope the solder just wants to stick to it which it now does so now there are two little blobs of solder let's see if I can get it clear image here I hope you can see right there you can see a small blob and here it's kind of apparent it's a little bit bigger uh, but I'm hoping this is enough for uh, this point right here let's see if I can add a little bit more uh, let's see I'll just try to hit the soldering iron first and get it to stick There we go, that's better. So, there is already some solder on these uh, quick connectors. What you can do if your uh, tips are uh, not pre-soldered, you can just add it. Uh, I'll see if these have plenty. They do not. So let's just add a little bit more to them. I'm gonna heat up the wire and let the solder touch now there's a little bit more of a blob on there so it'll be easier to make that connection point there we go two little blobs and i'm using these standing vice uh thingies because they help out so much you wouldn't believe so what i'll do 
is um, have the wire run flush against the side because I want to zip tie it to remove some of that tension so that when you pull the cable uh, it will not pull it on the soldering point but on the cable where you zip tied it so I'm just touching the two the two points that I just pre-soldered I'm gonna hold against each other and then hit it with the soldering iron melting both and then they'll make the connection like so and now see that now it's stuck <clears throat> so we'll do the same with the black one and right now we have two wires connected to that button so technically we have bypassed uh, the big button and we're go just gonna add a new switch to the other end of this wire and we're going to connect it to that one but first i'll do the zip tie thing because i really don't want to pull on this cable anymore i'm going to bend it back a little bit because i kind of forgot that this still has to go back in the casing which we can do now so this is what i did i pushed it back in i bent it a little bit and now it's still gonna go out but I'm still gonna do the zip tie thing because this can still come apart and I really do not want that so I'm gonna grab a big zip tie so zip tie put it underneath and put it like that Make sure the wire is somewhere uh, clamping down, otherwise it will not remove the tension of it. So, better for it to be facing down. And really pull it. So now we have relieved the, the pulling pressure. Let's say we would uh, wear this and you would constantly tug and pull on cables because uh, you have a lot of moving parts or whatever, wherever you place this. Now if you would pull, it doesn't pull there, but it pulls on the cable where it's zip tied. So you're relieving the pressure or the tension off of the soldering points. And it only takes one little zip tie. So I got these trusted micro switches I love using these because they have like this little arm and they press really well they have uh, several connection points to it you can um, make the circuitry or have it function as a breaker so that like a light is always on and then when you push it it actually kills the light or you can wire it as a normal switch so that the light is off and when you push it it's on it works both ways I'm grabbing some of this shrinking tube also. I prefer to use shrinking tube over the electrical tape because it's way more convenient. It will stay on there forever and electrical tape, well, it uses a sticky layer. So in my opinion, if you wear it in your armor or in your cosplay or whatever, it gets warm in there and sticky stuff usually does not like warmth. So I tend to avoid it and shrinking tube is just easier to push over a wire, slide it over and heat it up and it shrinks around uh, the wire. And it's not that expensive. You know, if you're buying electrical tape, you can just buy shrinking tube. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not all that much of a price difference so I have just grabbed that switch and I have uh, and I have uh, ran the uh, cable through the hole and then um, twisted it around itself and also for the other one so now I'm gonna hit it with some solder to permanent 
permanently make that connection, I'm stumbling over my own words here, and uh, then slide over the shrinking tube. So I'm just going to hold that with the clamps, give it the clamps, heat up the wire, and hit it. And hit that connection on the switch also to really permanently get it on there so that it doesn't twist and move around because again this connection is the weakest so better make it last and there we go cool it a little bit because don't put over the shrinking tube right away because the solder is still kind of hot hot enough for the uh, shrinking tube to react but you don't want it to react yet because you haven't slid it over all the way and that's one and that's two now that looks much nicer now doesn't it release the clamps and then grab a lighter if you don't want to use a lighter you can use a heat gun but I think a lighter is just faster and then watch that tube shrink and there we go so wait now we have simulated this button over here and we've guided it through to this button and you can make this cable as long as you want let's say this into this is in your backpack or in your belt and you want the switch to be in the palm of your hand or in your shoe uh, just make the wire as long as you want and have the switch there so I've just put it like halfway back together, put the battery in, let's press the button, beep beep. Hey, what do you know, it works. Let's continue the video. So now we got these two wires right here. These are the direct feeds from the four batteries that go into the control box. Now I'm gonna add another one of these quick connectors and I'm gonna uh, solder it directly to those connection points because I'm going to feed the air pump directly off of all batteries. Now these air pumps are rated for 6 to 12 volts so they will run just fine and the reason that I'm not wiring them off of the same button here because normally you would say like oh then I have one switch and that would operate uh, both the air pumps and the uh, smoke generator. Uh, if I wire this one directly to this button the control box will detect um, more power being used and it will shut off. I ran into this problem on my first unit that I uh, burned out uh, because I soldered stuff wrong. So I'm gonna run it directly off of the main line and it will need a second switch of these but these are flat enough so that I can glue them against each other and then still have the same button movement and it will function as one button. Do not use the same switch for both circuitries because you will ruin things. So use a second switch. There are switches that are um, rated for usage so that you actually have one button. These are called DPST switches. So that's DPST and that stands for double pole single throw meaning you can have two uh, circuitries meaning the two poles and one throw meaning the one switch they cost a little extra I don't have one here so that's why I'm gonna use two of these switches you can do that also it's no problem at all and I'll show you in a bit so first I'm gonna solder this quick snap-on connector again to the direct wires off the batteries and I'm gonna run this cable through the housing because remember we're gonna put this back together so it needs to go in and if I would run it through without uh, I would push it in and the wires would block it so do it from within now we've added this wire to the connection points of the battery and let's see 
if we can just push this back in and then it all fits back together, which it can. It's all nice. Pull it back out and it's still all nice and set. And now we have added those two connection points and because we ran it through the inside, we can just guide it alongside of the circuit board and push it back together. And now that battery casing is back into its original position and all the wires are sticking out fine. So pull it back out because we're not done yet. So before pushing this thing back in, we need to put this battery cover back. So put it there and push the pin back into it so that this one functions again. Now put it upside down and push that one back in. Now we can put the three uh, gold color screws back in, the tiny ones, the short ones, not the longer ones. There, now that one won't go anywhere. Push that one closed. Now it's time to put back together, or put back in these two uh, screws. And those are the, also the gold screws, but those are the little bit longer ones. And that's to keep the control board in its place. There we go. And that one, put that one back in. Now we got the cover. This is optional. If you really want to be safe, uh, you can put it back on. Uh, but don't forget to cut in a little slot here and on the other side for uh, these wires that are connected to the battery directly so that those can stick out uh, proper. So you see these are sticking out now because I've cut some V slots on either side. And now it's still protected, the buttons will work. Uh, be sure to make the V slots big enough because it's still metal and it could cut into uh, your uh, and it could cut into your isolation material here and make contact with the rest of the case and the wire. And you don't want that. So make sure to cut those deep enough. But we are not done soldering yet. We have made this one button. That is the activation button so that the atomizer will get hot. But we still need a switch and hook it up to the uh, air pump. And that's what this little guy still is for. So we have the other side of the quick connector. So this one would connect to this one. And that's the one that goes directly to the battery. Now, if I would hook this one, these two wires directly to the air pump, it would go on immediately. Uh, you wouldn't even have to power this on as well, as soon as the batteries are in and you pop uh, and you close the lid the air pump will turn on so what we're going to do is grab the black one and we are going to solder that one directly to the air pump but as for the red one we're going to hook up one of those same switches here and hook the other side of the switch up to the other end of the air pump Hit it with some solder. Push over the shrinking tube. Shrink the tube. And that's one side done. So I stripped the wiry bit here and then I grabbed a single loose red wire, stripped both ends and the one on the connector here that also has the black one that leads directly to the air pump, that's the negative. The positive, I will connect to the second switch. And let's see how they're wired, they're wired like that. Run through the hole and you can grab the loose wire and do that to the other connection point also. And hit it with some solder. And 
Now, the other side of this strip, this wire, will go through the whole, other hole of the air pump. So, now, what do we have here? What have we done? We have rewired the fire button to be on a different button and you can make the wire as long as you want and we have soldered two additional wires to the main battery and we wired it to the air pump through uh, another switch so I just put the batteries in now if I flip this switch it should trigger the air pump but not the vape box so here it goes well, you can hear, you can clearly uh, hear the air pump, and the screen is not turning on. So that part of the button works, and when I should press this button, there we go. It says no atomizer found, but that's because it's here. So now there is only one thing left to do, and that is hook this air pump up to that atomizer so that once we hit the fire button it will heat up the coils uh, and the air pump will blow smoke through this hole that hole and blow out smoke through that part but we do need some fog juice for that but let's do this also i am going to super glue these two switches together to kind of get like one switch like this like i said you can use a dpst switch for this uh but i didn't have one lying around and this one was the easiest option for me so now that i have the switch super glued i am going to use one of those lovely zip ties again just to connect or to hold the air pump in place to the box mod that's not going anywhere so here we have the uh, mellow e 300 uh, atomizer it is a 6.5 milliliter atomizer and you're gonna need this because at 300 watts it will um, use up a lot of this fog juice uh, the good thing is it's easy to refill and you don't have to screw it off again because these guys made it so that there is a refill hatch and this doesn't come off so you can just fill it push it closed and it won't leak at all and if you need to refill it again just pop it open there's a little arrow here so you know where it is and you can just fill it up from the top. Now, you'll notice that it has a hole here. This is where our um, tube will go from our air pump, but usually these things come with two holes. Now, you can slide it to set how much airflow there is if you would be vaping this, but an extra hole would just mean our uh, air from our air pump would be blasted out out of one side so we have to fill one up and you can do this with something permanent like bondo but i like to use uh, high temp hot glue for this now you might wonder why i would use hot glue uh, to fill up one of these holes uh, because the coil will get hot and you'd say like hey the hot glue will melt or get soft but don't forget there is a air hose going in on the other side blowing basically cold air into here so your uh, your hot glue will not even get that hot but if you want to make sure which i am use high temp hot glue also it's best to grab the little piece of hose that you're going to put on your air pump 
put that in on one side first because I do not know how big or how thick your hose will be. Maybe you can't get the same one that I have. But as you can see from but as you can see from here, mine does not go in all the way. So what I did is I push it in as far as I can get it and then slide it back closed so that I won't have any air escaping. And now on this side, I'm going to plug the hole with some hot glue. So I cleaned it with a lot of rubbing alcohol uh, and I scuffed it up with some sandpaper. So let's do that again, shall we? Now that we have plugged it up and we have our hose in this side, it is time to screw on the atomizer to the rest of the mod. Be sure to line it up to where the air pump is. Uh, usually you can see on the screen when it connects, uh, there is an ohm meter and once it pops to 0.17 or 0.21, it's usually on zero if this one is not connected. So once you see that it measures something, it's on there. It will also say no atomizer found if you uh, fire it up and it can't detect it. You might have to squeeze it or turn it, uh, I mean, a little bit further. So turn the hose a little bit and push it over the air pump. If you want, you can use another zip tie to really secure this one. Make sure it's all on there. And then it should. <laughs> Look at that, we got some smoke. It's kind of low still, so let's see what the watt wattage says. Oh, it's only on half. It's only on 145 watts, so let's crank that puppy up. Boom, 300 watts. One note though, when once you fill it up, let it sit for about 30 minutes. The cotton inside still needs to soak in all of your fog juice or, or glycerin. I'm not using glycerin here, I'm using fog juice. I've not had many successes with glycerin only in the small vape pen. Uh, the cotton still needs to soak it up and let the fog juice uh, reach the coils if you would fill it up and and fire up the whole system right away you'd burn the coils and you'll get a black mess like this you will stink up your whole room smelling like burnt well burnt cotton and burned well basically like fire and you don't want that especially not at a con you're already a walking chimney and then you'll be a uh, walking smelling chimney. So let it soak first before each run. Let the fog juice get to the coils. Right. This is a pretty nice uh, plume of smoke we got here. However, this is just with one air pump. You could even do the same on the other side with another air pump and what you would do is get this red wire that's from one of the switches and get it to a second air pump and that black wire also to a second air pump you would basically wire up a second air pump to the same battery got it i just showed you how to solder it so let's hook up the second one and see what that does to the smoke all right i have just added a second air pump to it and I connected to that other hole I removed the glue plug it really looks like a <laughs> monstrosity I know so I'll back up a bit and let's fire it up and that is a lot of smoke all right what do you know it's not even blasting on full power because it has a weak battery <laughs> it's kind of drained but even at a weak battery with a double air pump look at what it does <laughs> it's like you're a walking chimney ah, so i charged the battery a bit more it's the next day uh let's do this again 
Oh, yeah. Oh, I can't see anything. Holy shit. <laughs> All right. So, uh, if you ever want to cosplay uh, the, the Titanic, then uh, this is your ticket right here. Uh, I do know that uh, because I uh, plugged both air pumps now directly to the main battery, it will always say weak battery because he thinks it's draining really fast. So the, um, the circuitry, circuitry board will detect a dip in, in the battery and it thinks it's uh, a low battery, but you can still uh, keep pushing it and you'll see it on the battery levels when you actually do need to charge it. The same goes with every LiPo, do not drain these completely uh, and also do not use this for uh, like five minutes in a row. Uh, just like my other uh, e-cig vape pen uh, mod, uh, these um, vape pens or these uh, atomizers are made for vaping not for use as a smoke machine so use it accordingly if you would leave it on too long the coil will get burned like you've noticed with this one or if it's too dry and eventually it'll just break so use it responsibly and as for the heat uh, I know the box can feel warm to the touch, but uh, let's just zoom out here a bit. And uh, do that. That's uh, warm, really warm, but that's really when I hold my hand straight above it. It's, it's not hot up to the point that I'm burning my hand, so you can see I can hold it just above it. Now, of course, um, this is a kind of a, a big mod, so you might want to have this installed somewhere in your cosplay, but have the smoke come out somewhere else. Wow, it's really foggy in here. <laughs> so in comes the silicone tubing again. Cut a piece off. Uh, I, mine is a little bit... The housing is hot, as I just found out, because it's metal, so... Be careful with that one. If you leave it on way too long, like I just did, it does get hot. So I just hooked it up to a silicone hose. And there we go. The air pumps are strong enough to get it through. So that works. And the hose is not burned. It does feel a little bit warm and spongy, even though this is a silicone tubing. So the best thing you could use is a thick garden hose and slip it over the plastic end here so that you don't push it in. Because if you push it in, it will reach the coils that will get hot. If you just slide it over this plasticky bit, it will be much more safe. So that is how you build a big smoke machine while still being somewhat compact if you want those really big powerful plumes of smoke in your cosplay and it's like oh there we go i shouldn't do this too much because the whole room fills up with smoke and then the, the image will be really really foggy like i said before all links to these products are in the description most of it is bought on aliexpress uh it costs a little bit more of course than the small vape pen because well the box and the atomizer and the four high capacity lipo batteries uh yeah they do add up uh, I know there are uh, smaller versions of this that run with only two of those high cap uh, LiPo batteries. You could probably do the same thing with those as I've just done, but you uh, probably won't be able to get them to 300 watts, maybe half of it, but they are cheaper. Usually you can, I think I saw a set for about 30 bucks. I'll try and find it and put it in the description. So even if you want to go small, or if you want to go big with your smoke, I have both solutions. And I hope you learned a thing or two. Again, if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget to subscribe.